Our verse today is Matthew chapter 1, verse 22. All these took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Matthew begins his gospel with the genealogy of Jesus, establishing that Jesus had human ancestry. Then he concludes the genealogy with how Jesus was born and said that all these took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. He then quotes the prophecy of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Matthew demonstrates that the birth of Jesus was a prophecy come true. So today's reflection seeks to address the question of prophecy. What is prophecy and how do we see prophecy today? In the Old Testament and in the ancient Near East, there were different forms of divine communications which were generally called divinations and prophecy was one of them. There were diviners, fortune tellers, sorcerers and so on. The other nations around Israel had diviners, sorcerers and fortune tellers. Moses warned the Israelites against following the ways of the other nations. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 14. Many true prophets of God opposed the court prophets who lumped the diviners and sorcerers and the others together with God's prophets. For instance, the prophet Jeremiah condemned such. He says, So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your fortune tellers, or your sorcerers. Jeremiah chapter 27 verse 9. The true prophets of God were to be distinguished from the false prophets, diviners, fortune tellers, and sorcerers. Israel believed in God's exclusive authority and saw prophecy as the acceptable form of divine communication. Prophecy, nevoah in Hebrew, differs from other forms of divine human interaction. Among the other ancient Near Eastern forms of divination, there were human interpreters who did not hear from God nor proclaimed a direct message from the deity. They acted through casting of lots or dreams or sorcery. On the other hand, the true prophet heard directly from God and proclaimed the message as God's navi, God's prophet. There were two major categories of prophecy. The first was prediction or telling of the future. Here the prophet tells of what will happen in the future. The second was admonition, which could be accusatory or exhortatory. The message could be an indictment of what a person or the people were doing wrong and God condemned such actions through the prophet. Or the message was of exhortation for them to do the right thing and turn towards God. The true prophet of God was known when their prophecies come to pass. And this could take several years or centuries as we have in our verse today. The case we have in our verse today is the prophecy of prediction by the prophet Isaiah. And Matthew tells us that the birth of Jesus fulfills that prophecy of Isaiah. Today many people claim the title prophet and some, if not all, claim to hear from God. However, most of their prophecies have turned out to be false and gullible souls still follow and believe their predictions. Let us beware of false prophets masquerading as servants of God. Prophecy is a spiritual gift as St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1-5. And true prophets speak God's words as Peter tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, 20-21. They do not speak from the imagination of their minds or dreams or their aspirations or guesses. But that is what false prophets do. They speak from the imagination of their minds. When they have dreams, they say God has spoken to them. Or they speak from what they think or what they aspire to be. Lord, help gullible Christians who fall victim of false prophets and prophecies. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the day.